Hello everyone, Owen Giles here with Radical Truth. I want to welcome you back to our series on how Jesus is intellectually superior to Muhammad. And uh, before I get into this one, I just want to go ahead and um, give credit where credit is due. I'm getting a lot of my uh, information out of a book called The Apologetics of Jesus by Geisler. So check out this book, buy it uh, from Amazon. It's a great, great work. But uh, in this video, I want us to look at Luke chapter 6, verses 6 through 11. And here we find Jesus. He's getting ready to perform a miracle on the Sabbath. And verse 7 says that the scribes and Pharisees were, you guessed it, watching him closely. They're, um, just like in our last video, they're trying to find a reason to accuse him. They're trying to find fault with him in some kind of way. And, and Jesus knew what they were thinking. Um, but they, they didn't, you know, express this to him, but he knew just as if they had spoken out loud. So he calls the man over with a withered hand, and then he turns his attention to the scribes and the Pharisees, and he asks them, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save a life or to destroy it? The uh, rabbis agreed that the Sabbath could be violated under certain circumstances, such as um, saving a person's life. Uh, and of course, this end, you know, led to an endless debate. Um, but but God had already told the the Jews that um, that they should love their neighbor as themselves in Leviticus nineteen eighteen, and of course, the Sabbath was never meant to be a burden of any kind. So Jesus heals this man in verse ten. But what I want you to notice is his argument makes a perfect syllogism. This is a logical argument that he makes here. The first premise is, is it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Premise two, healing someone's hand is good. Conclusion, therefore it is lawful to heal a person's hand on the Sabbath. You gotta love the apologetics of Jesus. Um, but, you know, we could also add the miracle of healing that confirms his message. You know, he's not just performing a miracle for some arbitrary reason, but uh, he's confirming what he has said before. Jesus doesn't just say, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath, but he also presents evidence to back up his claims with a miracle. He heals this man's withered hand. And we know that even according to uh, non-Christian sources, such as the uh, Babylonian Talmud and uh, Josephus, there's there's one more that I can't think of at the moment, but uh, we know from non-Christian sources that Jesus is a miracle worker. Yet if we turn our attention to Muhammad, we find a confused, <laughs> mixed message. Over and over again, the people during the time of Muhammad are asking him for a sign. They're asking him for a miracle. Surah 6, 37. They say, why is not a sign sent down to him from his Lord? Notice, I want you to notice the answer to the question here that the Quran gives us. Allah completely ignores the question. No one has asked him if he's able or if he has the power, but his reply is, God has certainly the power to send down a sign, but most of them understand not. Maybe they don't understand because Allah and his prophet are the worst communicators ever. <laughs> Uh, the, the question is, why? Why doesn't he send a sign to confirm Muhammad? Uh, these are reasonable people wanting uh, you know, confirmation on Muhammad's prophethood. Surah 10, 20, the question is asked again. This time the answer is that the unseen is only for Allah. You just have to wait. So Mo Moses performed miracles. Elijah performed miracles. Jesus performed miracles, but not Muhammad. The Quran says he is only a warner. Surah 11.2, Surah 13.27, Surah 27.92, um, Surah 17.59, and, and there, are, there are others. Um, in Surah 17.59, we're told that Allah refrains from sending signs because the men of old, or the former generations, treated them as false. <laughs> uh, according to uh, Islamic sources, uh, Allah sent a she-camel to the, the people of Tamud, and one commentary says that the camel was a living miracle that caused people to convert to Islam every day. It, it doesn't really tell us how. It doesn't explain how this camel was a miracle. It just makes this blatant statement. 
Um, another source says the people eventually slew the camel, and because they treated her wrongly, Surah 1759, Allah destroyed them in an earthquake. So instead of miracles being given as a sign or evidence of Muhammad's prophethood, Allah says, and I quote, we only send the signs by way of terror. You know, when I read something like this, I, I tend to want to go to a historical argument, but, but there's really no need. Here, Allah admits that he doesn't send a sign to verify Muhammad's prophethood, but instead, he sends this sign to put terror into the hearts of the people. Folks, only a false prophet could not confirm his message through miracles. Jesus performed miracles over and over and over again because he is the God-man. My Muslim friends, as I close out, I invite you to come to him. Come to the, the, the one and only miracle worker, the one who preaches a message of salvation and redemption through himself, and he confirms this message through the work of miracles. We even have non-Christian sources that acknowledge this truth. So until next time, this is Olin Giles with Radical Truth. Blessings.